Hello everyone, this is Anissa Something Beautiful Handcrafts and I have the finished yarn. Um, it looks, it's spooky enough. It's doing pretty good and actually I know I said I had a rough time with the last uh, Alpaca South Down mix. I don't know what was going on with that particular one, but this one was pretty good. I mean, it's still south down. It still was relatively short, but it wasn't full of nips like the other one was. So yay to this particular batch of roving. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the knitting started. I will put the link to the pattern below and get you started with, if I make any adjustments to the size or anything like that. This hat takes, it doesn't take a lot of time to work up. So it's a day project for the, you know what, it actually could be a day project for the knitting and the spinning, depending on how much sit down time you have. But it's not, it's not a very lengthy project. I am going to dye the hat, but I'm not going to do that till after I am done with the knitting. Then that's when I'll, I'll, do the dyeing and hopefully you'll be able to see the finished product for that one. So you found this pattern on Ravelry and the link to it should be below. I'm very close to the end here. So I'm using circular needles, which I almost, I'm always using circular needles to knit and around. Uh, and this, I think it's either a 30, six or 40 inch cable. I like them long because I do my socks two at a time. So I, I just like the longer cables. Some people find it, you know, kind of gets in the way. It's personal preference there. The pattern calls for a size 10 needle. I knit really tight. And so I'm using a 10 and a half for this one right here. And I'm using a bamboo needle just because I'm using a bamboo needle. Um, I don't have any metal needles in sizes 10. But what I like to do is for wools, I kind of like to use metal. I feel like it comes off the needle better. And for slippery fibers like alpaca, I tend to like to use the bamboo needles because it gives it a little bit of grip. But in this case, this is wool and um, alpaca. So I just use the needles that I had. For circular needles, these ten right here. Uh, I'm not going to talk you through the pattern because I don't want to do any pattern copyright infringement in this case. And it's pretty simple. I cast on. I cast on exactly the amount that the pattern calls for. In this case, if I didn't want to make any gauge changes, I would just change the size of my needle. In this particular case, not cast on more or less. And it's kind of a one size fits all hat. And it doesn't look like much of a cap right now, but it will when I finish the shaping. I'm just now at the decreases. At any rate, you do the cables. And these are normal cables. Uh, I have no idea what happened to my cable needle. It's been a long time. And then I moved. So I just used a yarn needle just to hold the cable needles. And then at one point I used uh, a kilt pin. So nothing super fancy right there. But it's working up really nice. Like I said, I'm on the decrease. And in a little bit, I should be done with the top. Cappy Tan Hat is finished. My mom decided she didn't want to have it dyed any color. So this is where it's going to stay. And she didn't want the band to go across her. So no band. Okay, now... The most challenging part for me, uh, and that, you know, it's not really challenging as much as it is nerve wracking because I like everything to be completely on center, was when you're doing the brim, you're picking up stitches along the outside edge. So I, I was just like crazy about trying to pick up the same amount of stitches all the way across and distribute that 14 evenly. And then when I picked up the extra two on one side to make sure I was picking it up proportionately, almost in the same distance as the other side. And if you look, yeah, it turned out almost exactly, you know, equal. So just be careful about picking up the stitches. I don't 
make one left or right. Whenever I make one left or right, I always wind up with like these holes. And it's just, I guess it's the way, I don't know, it could be a couple of reasons why I'm not really sure. But in order to avoid the holes I get from making one left or right, I usually just make one through the back loop. And that just seems to turn out okay. I do that for my socks too. And that's when I started because I didn't want the holes from the make one. So if you get holes when you do your make one left or right, you can try uh, making one through the back loop. Or was it knit front and back? I think is how it's usually written out. So I did that. And then what happens is you make the complete increase, brim around here. Then you do a purl. Then a pearl on the other side, and that's the edge of your hat. And then you do your decreases. And you stitch this double flap down to the front edge of the cap. And that's what gives you your brim. It, You know what? I think it's plenty stiff. You could stiffen it with something inside of it before you stitch it closed. If you feel like you need to stiffen it at all. But to me, it was it was stiff enough. And then it really takes the shaping on as more of a cap. It is just the cutest little guy. And that because this is alpaca, it will bloom a little bit in the wash and full out quite nicely. I'm not going to show you how it's going to look when it's full because uh, my mom wants it like right now. So <laughs> I'm just going to give it over to her and let her decide on what she's going to do from there. Okay, everybody, remember that the pattern should be down in the comments. And if you beat me to putting the link in there before I've uploaded the video, you will find this on Reveille as the Capitan hat, not Captain, Capitan hat. So just look it up there. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this spin and this pattern. As always, thank you for watching. Have a great day.